I'm Marcia Hughes, and today we're going to be talking with Roger Pierman from Qualifying.org about the chapter that he's written in Developing Emotional Intelligence. Roger, thank you for writing your chapter. There are so many people really interested in the combination of the EQI and the Myers-Briggs Temperament Inventory. Can you tell us just a little bit about what you found of how they connect? Well, um, <clears throat> There, there are a number of ways of thinking about the relationship between something like personality type and uh -huh. emotional intelligence. Uh, in the ways that I have found useful, um, as the chapter is entitled Pragmatic Tools for the uh -huh. Practitioner, um, that when you understand personality type and you're, you're looking at, for example, assertiveness, Right. What you might very well find is that an individual who, uh, whose pattern from type language, let's say, is ISTJ, that he or she tends to have a little different tonality to their assertiveness, right. a different in the word choice that they make in terms of the way they want to assert their particular ideas or perspective, a different tonality than you might hear from, let's say, a person whose preferences are ENFP. Again, they may score roughly the same on the instrument, the EQI, in terms of assertiveness, but the, the way in which the assertiveness plays out, in fact, looks differently, and they think of it in sort of different ways. So the tool is, the EQI has tapped into a behavior, the use of personality type, whether it's the Myers-Briggs type indicator or other useful uh, tools that get at personality type, um, is tapping into how those expressions, in fact, might be colored through uh, the typology. <clears throat> and what we found in the data sets that we've collected is, as, as one might expect, that certain types tend to have somewhat, um, uh, they, the way they reported themselves, they said, well, I don't intend, I don't show that particular behavior very much, let's say empathy, for example. Uh, another type says, I tend to show that behavior a whole lot more. And so the chapter uh, attempts to give you a summary of what those trends and patterns are so that, A, when you're giving feedback as a practitioner, um, if the person gets a score and they're puzzled about that score, mm -hmm. Um, you as a practitioner can say now, well, gee, um, that's really sort of typical of folks with your preferences that they tend to report themselves this way. That's good. Now, the question is, if that's true for you, mm -hmm. um, how does that work for you and how does that work against you? And the other part of the chapter is about actually what do you do about it? Right. If those trends are playing out and, in fact, um, that's feedback you've received and you've confirmed it, then the chapter gives some tips and suggestions that, well, if this is your preference, here are some things to think about to help you um, perhaps be more effective within that personality pattern uh, to enhance your overall emotionally intelligent responses to circumstances. That's a, a lot to answer your question. <laughs> well, and I was just thinking of so many things like, this can really help people who are coaching someone, right? If you're coaching an introvert, who has the same score in assertiveness and an, an extrovert with the mm. same score, you might coach them a little bit differently because they're going to be connecting with that skill differently, probably. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, again, if, if in fact the personality type instruments are giving us some clues mm -hmm. about how a person sees himself or herself, then that's right. As a coach, you may find that um, when you're working with an individual, if you have this a little additional information about them, of course you're going to verify and check it out. Sure. Um, their pathway for development is likely to be a little different than, let's say, a, 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 using your example, an introvert versus a person with an extroverted preference. And the, concretely, the way that might show is <clears throat> we might find that an individual with an extroverted preference really does want to talk it out before mm -hmm. they go practice it. Mm -hmm. Whereas a person with an introverted preference may want to have time to create a plan on a behavior they want to test, test the idea with a couple of people, come back and talk about it, adjust it, go back and test the idea, which, which is their sort of natural pull and natural uh, how, how they would typically try to learn 
or stretch in the new behavior. Yeah, very good. One of the things I love about your chapter are the different tables you have on what we would expect to see as high skills or what people might rate themselves in as having lower skills depending on their type. Mm -hmm. but I think that's going to help all of us get just a different take of how to approach merging personality or type theory together with the EQ skills. Well, hopefully that will happen. Mm -hmm. that, and again, for me, the issue is not that this is a fixed outcome, but these are trends. And right. I, I think of data patterns as possibility patterns. Mm -hmm. Good. Here are some possibilities of how the data may fall for the person you're working with. And if that's true, then there's some ways of understanding that. Um, and then more importantly, if it's true, ways to approach the individual to help them figure out the strategy that's going to enable them to be more successful and more satisfied in their work and in their lives. Um, it, it strikes me that anytime you have a self-report tool, right. like a Myers-Briggs type indicator or an EQI, we really have to begin with the proposition that this is the person telling us what he or she thinks about himself. True. And the goal, in my mind, mm -hmm. is to discover if, in fact, that image that they carry around of who they are and how they operate in the world is, in fact, how the world experiences them, and is it getting them what they fully want in, in fulfillment in terms of their work and in their relationships. And so I would hope that people would use the chapter as a platform for discovery and exploration with the thought in mind that we have some data that we can we can create some hypotheses on that would enable us to um, perhaps more efficiently help a person move toward their developmental goals. And something of, of accurate self-reflection, I think. Maybe taking them to a deeper level, really mm -hmm. understanding themselves and their possibilities. Well, if if indeed and if if the person is there to learn mm -hmm. <laughs> Right. and to get a good handle on how their psychology operates. Right. Um, so much of our individual psychology is uh, so deeply embedded and not immediately accessible that one of the beauties of tools of this nature is that the learning agile person is able then to begin right. to think about it. And there's a, there's a phrase I like from a writer who says, one of our challenges is to learn what has us. Oh. What, what has us in its grip in terms of our psychology, our right. deep psychology. And then as we learn more about what has us, we are freer to choose um, what we would like to do in order to feel more satisfied in our life and work. In a way, if, if, you, if you've reported yourself on an instrument like, like mm -hmm. a type instrument, then you've said, you know, I tend to prefer to get things clear in my head before I act on it. I tend to be a person who likes very specific data points and I'm attracted to specific data points over ideas or over concepts. Then just those two factors alone are likely to play out in a whole bunch of ways in the choices you make in day-to-day -day life. Mm -hmm. No doubt that would be different when you're answering questions on an EQI where you think of yourself using the example I've given, right. you think of yourself as a person who really wants to think it through, we wouldn't be surprised to know that folks who are that way tend to score higher on impulse control. Right, right? of course it is, yeah. Um, if you tend to be a person who likes things precise and systematic, you tend to score higher on problem solving. Right. That's what so, I yeah. yeah, so um, the sort of coalescence of those data points give you the best chance of bringing it up so you have a chance to decide, hmm, is that really working for me? Do I need to flex a little more? Do I need to stretch a little more? And um, what are ways in which I might stretch, which the chapter makes some suggestions about that as well. Well, Roger, I would love to spend another day talking about this, but I think at this point we'll let our viewers say, wow, I need to go read that chapter now. I, and I hope they'll give us feedback so we'll oh, know how it was received. Indeed. Thank you so much for being with us. Thanks for the opportunity. You're welcome. Bye.